How does clutter get into our homes? Do they grow legs and march their way through the door, then into our kitchen counters, tabletops, and office desks? Sounds ridiculous, right? But it sure feels like they do, don't they? And truly, how does clutter get into our homes? Short answer is that we bring them in. We hate to admit it, but we do. We ourselves bring them in. But what if we gave ourselves the opportunity to stop? To stop what? Bringing the clutter in, in the first place, before we get too attached to these items, right? Let me tell you how I did this by providing you with 10 items that I stopped purchasing or bought less of, and it really curbed the clutter for me. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Organize with Grace podcast. Do you feel like you're always struggling to get it together? Do you feel like you're burning the candle at both ends? Feeling completely disorganized in your home and life? That it's starting to affect you mentally and emotionally? Well, you've come to the right place if you need encouragement, easy and simple organization tips, or you just want to know that you're not alone in this season of life. Hi, I'm Grace Ramon, your fellow working mom and professional organizer. I believe in you, friend. You can get it together. Now let's get organized. I want to share with you 10 items that I stopped purchasing or stopped purchasing too many of that helped reduce my clutter and how you can do the same. So without further ado, I'm going to list them out and they're not in any particular order, um, but they are items that I have noticed that I have purchased less of, like I said earlier, and it has really made a um, a difference as far as um, me not bringing clutter into the home in the first place. And the first item that I want to talk about are candles. Now, I love candles. I love purchasing them. I love the different scents that are available. And there was a point where I was collecting so many different candles with so many different scents, right? And so I made a decision to no longer purchase too many. And right now I only have two, one in the bathroom and then one in my office. So that's been a real accomplishment for me. (laughs) The second one are those uh, reusable shopping bags. Now, I still do. I still have a good pile of reusable bags that I like to keep and that I don't necessarily want to get rid of, but I had a lot, a lot more than I've had now. So reusable bags, you end up not being able to know where to put them if you had too many. And really, how many are you going to use for grocery shopping um, or shopping in general? You really only need a few. So that's what I had a lot of. And I told myself, you know what, you need to stop buying those. You have too many. Number three, office supplies, especially pens. I still have too many of them, but not nearly as many. So these are pens. They're small and they accumulate very easily. And again, same thing as reusable bags. How many pens do you really need? You only need to use one at a time, right? (laughs) And then the next thing is number four are books. I love reading. I love reading. I love learning. And I used to have nine boxes of books. And it was so difficult to part with them. But I came to a decision that I'm probably never going to read more than 50% of what I had. So I chose the best of the best and kept those. And the, my alternative now, instead of purchasing more books is I do have a Scribd membership. It's a subscription for audiobooks as well as digital books. And I have enjoyed that thoroughly because 
Um, I can sneak peek through the books that I'm interested in, and then I end up not really being interested in it. And then um, I just put it back or, you know, no longer save it in my, um, in my digital library. So that's really decreased a lot of clutter for me. And I no longer need to keep trying to figure out how I can store all of these books. Number five, target dollar items or dollar tree items that we find so cute at the time that we find it at the store. And these things do accumulate. And because they so-called don't cost that much, what's the hurt? But again, you may be bringing in clutter that you don't necessarily need and that you don't know where to put them. Number six are mugs, cups, or water bottles. These things tend to accumulate through time. And if we're not careful, we're all of a sudden having a cupboard full of mugs or cups or water bottles that we no longer use. Number seven, I used to be really notorious at doing this, is purchasing shirts on sale and buying them in every color. I don't know why I would want all of these shirts in every color, but I did. And the funny thing is, maybe out of like five or six, only one of them, or if I'm lucky, two of them would actually look good on me color-wise. And I end up just storing the other ones and not wearing them. And number eight, ooh, and this might hurt, ladies, because we love this so much, and that is makeup. Ah, makeup. Just one more eyeshadow or one more lipstick. And, you know, I decluttered my makeup a few years ago. And, you know, I love wearing makeup and I love learning the tutorials and everything with on YouTube. But I found that no matter what palette I used, I would end up with the same look. And I would use the same types of shades of makeup no matter if I had like five different types of eyeshadow palettes. <laughs> I'm so envious of those that can create like different looks, but that's just, it's not me. I, I don't, I have, I have one uh, set way of doing makeup. And I just said, you know what, this is all I do. And I'm pretty happy with it. And so that's why I stopped purchasing makeup altogether. I don't think I've walked into an Ulta in a couple of years. And that is amazing. You can ask my niece because we were such makeup addicts at one point. Um, don't get me wrong. I still love it. I still love wearing makeup. Um, I love getting all um, dolled up. Uh, but I found that I was accumulating too many and I was not using um, any of them, you know, I, I was using a very, um, I was using the same ones over and over. All right. Number nine, bins, baskets, or Tupperwares, especially storage bins, because, uh, I did a, I think it was probably the only, um, IGTV that I, yeah, it is the only IGTV that I have posted online. I, I hope to do more, but, um, I talked about how to, you know, how to organize your pantry, right? And I warned um, the viewer that, hey, do not purchase containers first because you don't know what you're going to contain. Um, what ends up happening is that we purchase bins and baskets and because we don't know what to use them for, they end up being clutter they end up being unused because we never knew what they were for in the first place. We either purchased them because they're really cute um, or we think we know what we, to do with them, but they end up not matching the decor that we have or the vision that we had for storing, etc. 
And number 10, kitchen gadgets. The types of kitchen gadgets that I'm talking about are like the lemon squeezers or uh, hard-boiled egg cutters, things like that, that would only have one purpose. Um, While it's good to have, it's not really necessary. So those types of kitchen gadgets um, try to get away from because you will just accumulate them and you won't, you won't know you'll run out of drawer space and you'll be like, and then because you purchased it, you're like, well, I purchased it and maybe I'll use it someday. And then you end up keeping it and it's just simply clutter. Now you may be saying, okay, Grace, thanks for the 10 items. And yes, I do admit that I still, I have too many of those too. And no, don't feel bad if you do. I just wanted to share my 10 items so that, yes, you can, the purpose of it is so that you can begin to think about um, your own. What are the 10 things? What are the five things that you are noticing that you keep and continually purchase that is only accumulating and you are seeing it now as clutter. Now, what I want to give you next are three steps to help you to stop buying them. Or if you cannot completely stop buying them, maybe less, less often. So step number one, make note and be mindful of what you tend to purchase on impulse. So you will begin to ask yourself questions while you're at the store, right? Do I truly need this? And where will I put this? And then will I use this? So only you can answer these questions for yourself. Of course, we can convince ourselves to do whatever it is that we feel like doing in the first place. So it's it's a matter of practice. It's a matter of being really mindful of what you want and having that big picture of, hey, I no longer want a whole lot of clutter in my home. So I'm going to make decisions right here at the store and not look back, right? And I know you can do it. And number two, start creating your list of, like I said earlier, you might already have gotten some ideas from off of my list, but create your own list of things that you no longer need because you have too many of it, too many of them, right? And by making this list, you begin to um, recall it in, on your mind. By making the list, you will be able to say to yourself, hey, I already have 10 of these, or I already have multiples of those, and you won't be tempted to purchase another one, hopefully. (laughs) And number three, be patient with yourself, because it takes time to get out of the habit of purchasing these items. Um, Yes, most likely it has become a habit. So you may need to stop going to the stores where you're spending money sometimes, or have a little bit of a, you know, fast a little bit and begin to um, replace these habits with something else. And I have a client who he started to notice that he would, out of boredom, walk around Target or walk around the mall. And as a result, he will pick up random items or yet another shirt, which is what we are working on at the moment, um, is reducing his, um, his clothing and the amount of clothing that clothing that he has. And so these are three things, three steps that you can take now to try to help you be more mindful of what it is that you're bringing into your home, because I want you to have less clutter and 
more clarity <laughs> within your home and not allow the clutter to um, to get in your way, literally, physically. I sure hope you enjoyed this episode and maybe even got a chuckle out of it because you may already been looking around your home and starting to see how much uh, you've accumulated of the same items. So I do wish you the best. And if you need help with this, if you need some momentum with this, I'm here for you. Like I've been saying, I can meet you online. We can get on Zoom and talk about your needs as far as your um, organization at your home. And I can provide you with some strategies, some ideas, and you'll be well on your way um, to be a more organized you, okay? And that's what I want for you, most of all. So get on a call with me. I'm going to put a link on the show notes, and you can easily click on that. And you and I can chat for 15 minutes. And let's see if we are a good match and that if we can work together on your project or that thing that you have been wanting to organize, maybe that space or maybe that room that turned into a dump zone. I may have an episode on that sometime. So yeah, come on in and there is no obligation to purchase Seriously, I would just love to know how you're doing and where you're at in your organization. So come and do a 15 minute free call with me and I can't wait to meet you. Hey, real quick, if you enjoyed today's episode, the best way to thank me is by leaving an iTunes review. If you're listening to me right now on your iPhone, simply scroll down, click write a review within the podcast and voila you'll get a chance to click five stars and type in how the podcast has helped you you can also access itunes on your computer if you're not an iphone user by downloading the itunes app also i offer virtual organizing and that means we get to hop on zoom together wherever you are and i can help you organize your space for a fraction of a price that you would spend hiring an in-person organizer. Contact me by email, hello at organizewithgrace.com so you and I can get started. I offer a free 15-minute assessment to see if we're a good match to work together. So get on it, girl. Stop being stuck on your organizing journey. I'll help you walk forward so you can finish that organizing project that you've been procrastinating on. No judgment here done it myself, but you know what I'm talking about, girl. All right. Can't wait to talk to you. Bye.